Hello, I'm Reggie York, professor at University of North Carolina, Wilmington. This is a presentation on using chi-square when you have two dichotomous variables. At the end of this presentation, you will be able to employ the Excel file that I have composed for calculating chi-square and phi coefficient, by the way, to examine whether two groups are different in regard to a dichotomous variable. So we're talking about two dichotomous variable variables. A dichotomous variable is one that has only two categories. You will know how to use this file to determine the value of p and the value of phi, phi coefficient, which is a measure of the strength of the relationship. This means that you will you have data on two variables, each measured in a dichotomous fashion, yes or no, or something of that nature. You wish to know if there is a relationship between these two variables and employ statistics to examine the issue of chance as the explanation. In the example I'm going to use, it's going to be comparing a treatment group with a comparison group on the basis of whether they improved with the options being yes or no. I'm assuming you understand the value of p in statistics and generally what statistics do, even though you're not expected to know a particular statistic. Here's an example. The question, did the, did the person improve, yes or no? We have two groups, a treatment group and a comparison group. So some people were in the treatment group. 40 people in the treatment group improved. 10 people in the treatment group did not. For the comparison group, we have 20 people who improved and 20 people who did not. So that's one example. So the question becomes, what does chi-square do? It compares the frequencies in each cell with the frequencies that would be present if there was not a relationship between the two variables at all. Let's look at this particular example. 50% of the treatment group improved. 50% did not. Well, as you look at the comparison group, you see that it is identical. 50% improved and 50% uh, did not. The key uh, thing to consider, although this shows clearly a lack of relationship, we're going to be focusing a lot on this per percentage compared to that percentage in our examination of this. Your data, you have data on each variable for each person in your study. That is to say, I'm making that assumption. If you're using this guide, that's what you should have in order to use this guide. For example, person number one was in the treatment group and improved, yes. Person two was in the treatment group and also improved, yes. Person three was in the comparison group, well, they also improved, yes. Person four was in the comparison group, did not improve, that was no. Well, here's somebody who was in treatment group and did not improve. Another person comparison group did not improve. So this is just a uh, part of the data that you, that you would have uh, before you use this particular guide. So what do you do with your data? You add up the values in each cell. This means that the number who were in the treatment group and improved, the number who were in the treatment group and did not improve, the number who were in the comparison group and improved, and the number of people who were in the comparison group and did not approve. So you've got four different numbers you need to have handy to use the file. Let's look at the question of statistical significance and practical significance in regard to our data. Statistical significance tells us how likely our data would occur by chance. If it would occur by chance a lot, then we don't have much confidence that we have anything of value. It's just chance that we have discovered. Practical significance is an opinion about the extent that our data is noteworthy. Some data could be of statistical significance, but not be of practical significance, because even though you, the, this particular data is not easily explained by chance, the strength of the relationship between the variables may be such that it's just not very noteworthy. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. It is difficult to have practical significance in the absence of statistical significance given the basic meaning of failing to find statistical significance. If you fail to find statistical significance, you've said you have not ruled out chance. If you've not done that, 
how can you say the data you have is of practical value? You're saying that the data is explained by chance. You have chance rather than true meaning. Chi coefficient is an aid to practical significance. The value of chi, chi coefficient is a measure of the strength of the relationship. It can possibly range from a high of 1.0 to a low of 0. The higher the value, the stronger is the relationship. Let's illustrate. Here we have, again, improvement, yes or no, treatment group, comparison group. 80% of the treatment group improved. Focus there for a moment. How many? What proportion of the of the comparison group improved? Fifty percent. We're looking at proportions, not numbers. Eighty percent versus fifty percent percent. That's how much of a difference there was between the two groups. It says something about the difference that the treatment made. For the data in the previous table. The value of chi-square is 9, and the value of phi coefficient is 3.316. Chi-square is often noted as x with a square sign there. So you report the value of chi-square as x square equals 9.0. This value can be looked up in a statistical table to determine statistical significance. As you will note, when you see the Excel file, a chi-square value of 2.7 or higher is significant at the point 1 level, while a value of 3.84 reaches the point 0.05 level, and 6.6, .6, that is to say a chi-square of 6.6, .6 is significant at the point 0.01 level. Let's look at phi coefficient and practical significance for a moment. The value of phi coefficient indicates that the difference between the proportions of the two groups of favorable results is approximately 30%. We saw that 80% of the treatment group got better, 50% of the comparison group got better. The difference, 30. That is, in fact, a, a reasonably good rule of thumb for estimating the value of phi coefficient. In this previous example, phi coefficient was determined to be 0.316. So it's very close to 0.3. So if you, if, you, if you take that percentage difference and convert it to a fraction, put a point in front of it, 0.30, then of course you were very close to estimating the value of phi coefficient. Here it was 0.316. This rule of thumb is good in a lot of situations, but not if you have a, there are some situations where if you have a very peculiar array of data, it's not as good uh, uh, an estimate. It's only an estimate. It's not the way to present or calculate phi coefficient. You will note that 80% of the treatment group got better compared to 50% of the comparison group, and as we discussed, got through mentioning it, that's a reasonably good estimate of the value of phi coefficient. So here is the question, how much of a, is this of practical significance to you? that 80% versus 50%. It's a matter of opinion. You have to decide for yourself, was this of practical significance? And you might want to think about practical significance, as fact you probably should, before you even examine your data. What kind of difference would be of practical significance? Decide before you examine your data, so as not to bias your opinion. Now you are ready to use the Excel file you will load the Excel software into your computer. Then you will load the Excel file entitled chi-square for two dichotomous variables. Actually, the name York is in front of that. You will enter your data and find the value of chi-square and the value of p, as well as the value of phi coefficient. Now we will look at the, the Excel file. Here's what it looks like. You can see from the instructions, it says, Enter the number of treatment group persons with favorable behavior in B11. Here's B. Here's 11. So here is where you put it, right there. The number of treatment group persons who got better. The number of treatment group per persons with unfavorable is right here. That's B12. And as you can see, 
the favorable recordings for the comparison group would be here, C11, and of course the, comp the comparison group persons who did not have favorable recordings would be C12, which goes right there. Once you enter those numbers in there, you'll come up with a value. Let's put in the numbers we just did, that we just illustrated. Okay, now we've put the numbers in. Here is chi-square. Here is the value of chi-square, it's a 9. Here is the value, value of phi coefficient, 0 0.316. And as you can see over here, this tells you about the different values. The chi-square value of 3.84 or higher is significant at the 0.05 level and so forth. These are the critical things to examine as you're trying to determine um, the situation. Let me give you a caution here. Um, you have expected frequencies. You see these expected frequencies over here? The numbers, these four numbers. If any of these four numbers is lower than 5, st statisticians say that chi-square may not be a good measure of your... You don't very often see that, and of course as you here, see here, none of these values is below 5. Okay, I hope you know now your chi-square value is 9, your phi coefficient value is 0.36, now you know about statistical significance and you know about practical significance for this particular hypothetical set of data. I hope this was helpful to you.